Welcome back to PR After Hours. I'm your host, Alex Greenwood, bringing you your weekly cocktail of PR and marketing tips that will help you and your business. We're talking about building a successful personal brand using LinkedIn with today's guest, Sam Winsbury, otherwise known as that personal branding guy. He'll be with us in just a moment, right after these messages. Hello listeners, it's me, Alex, from PR After Hours. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. And I wanted to talk to you just for a moment about the way I get this show right into your earbuds every week. It's because I use Anchor FM. Now, I've told you previously that I've been podcasting since 2006, back when we used stone knives and bear skins and a couple of Dixie cups and string. Anchor FM has really, really streamlined this and made it simpler for people who don't know the first thing about setting up a podcast or don't have you know time to learn all the pro tools and stuff because it's all right here first thing it's important to know is it's free there are certain tools that will allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer anchor will then distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on spotify apple podcasts and many more that's huge distribution is a big pain in the butt to be honest with you so it's really great anchor fm can do that for you and you're not paying hosting fees that adds up every month it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place so download the free anchor app or go to anchor fm to get started and be sure to join me in the virtual cocktail lounge on pr after hours Building a personal brand, that's something we talk about a lot here in the virtual lounge at PR After Hours. And I got to tell you, everybody's got a take on it, but our guest today blew me away with his approach to personal branding, particularly in the realm of LinkedIn. So we're really fortunate to have Sam Winsbury here. Sam is an expert in personal branding and so many different facets of it. He is a podcaster, he is a writer, but he is more than that. He is the guy to go to to help you work on your personal brand so it can be effective. The one thing that stood out about Sam that I really liked was he was really against the guru model. Funny because he technically could be called a guru, but he doesn't operate from that kind of uh, direction. So Sam, welcome to the virtual lounge here at PR After Hours. Alex, thank you very much for the warm introduction and for having me on the show today. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, so did I get that right? Because I see on your website, this is not a guru-based system that you're working from. Yeah, spot on. And I think there's a lot of Suspicion, I think, is probably the word around the guru approach. And that probably comes from people kind of faking their entrepreneurial endeavors. And I'd actually go as far as saying scamming people, um, which I know it's it's a bold statement, but it has been true in some cases, or at least they're under delivering. And I think personal branding is something that can be very beneficial to businesses. But if we don't take it seriously and take quite a realistic and practical approach to it, I think it can actually just become another buzzword and do more harm than good. And yeah, as you said, sort of make people look like these these other gurus. So I think it's really important to, to distinguish the approach we take from that approach. So you're spot on there. Well, so Sam, does it become also for some people that does personal branding become yet another chore, another box to tick as they're going forward in business? Does it just become something where people, if they don't understand how to do it or they think they understand how to do it, um, it just becomes something that's that's becomes rather rote and not successful? Is that part of it? Yeah, I think so. And I'm, I'm quite realistic in the fact that I know that well, a personal branding isn't for everyone. I think it's important to realize that. And B, it is not the only strategy that can grow your business. There are countless examples of businesses throughout history that have grown without personal brands. So it's important to, to remember that you don't have to build one if you want to be successful. You can win in your business without doing it. It is simply a method for growing your business. And if you find a way that works for you or you think personal branding is particularly suited to you then by all means use it and go for it and sort of use it as your main marketing tool I guess I think if you're going to do that probably the way to make it not seem like a chore is to well I use I use systems and processes essentially that take most of the stress out of it and I'm sure we can dive a little bit more into that but that's sort of around things like creating content. Content is a, is a big part of your personal brand and that's obviously 
quite a chore for a lot of people having to sit down. Maybe they're not writers or they're not very good in front of a camera, but actually creating a system where you can take one piece of content. So a podcast, for example, we're doing a podcast right now. You could take that podcast and you could really just chop it up into five or so clips. You might get a text post from it. You repurpose it into other content and then you can post that throughout the week. If you do that all in one go, maybe on a Friday afternoon or, or a Monday morning, you've then got all your content for the week. And you don't have to sit around and stress over it every day thinking, what am I going to post? It's just there. <laughs> so it's, it's, yeah, it doesn't take me long to, long to post at all. I literally just copy and paste or, or post a video that I've already recorded and that sort of takes the stress out of it. Yeah, same here. I'll, I will spend typically a day or two a week building up content, recording interviews with people like yourself or just recording my own bits and pieces. For I have two podcasts and another one in addition to this one, more of a longer form show about creativity. And I, I find that so simple. And I love what you said about chopping it up into bits and using it in different ways, repurposing it. Uh, a lot of my clients, I'm a public relations uh, consultant, don't seem to understand that, you know, I, I, I always tell them I need content from you. I need, because you're the expert. You have to tell me what to say i'll repackage it for you but they can't a lot of them get down to just the nitty-gritty of writing maybe a three paragraph blog post that i can try to repurpose right i think it's very daunting to people that way and as you said sam not everybody's good in front of a camera fair enough not everybody should do a podcast fair enough but not everybody's a good writer fair enough but is this the approach you take let's say i came to you and uh, let's assume I don't have a podcast and let's assume I, I don't write well and all those things. Okay, because I'm actually, I think I'm doing fairly well on the personal branding front, but uh, I'm also ancient too. So I've been around long enough to make all the mistakes. But <laughs> let's assume I'm just fresh, uh, fresh person uh, looking for help. How do you help the person? And let's, let's assume, first of all, you evaluate and say, yeah, you're suitable to build a personal brand. This is a good idea for you. Can you walk us through the steps of your, your process? Yeah, so... There's obviously a lot of background work going on ensuring we know what you want to build the personal brand around, the kind of things you want to stand for, um, and what you're actually looking to do with it. A personal brand should actually be practical. It should deliver results. So you've got to get that, that goal nailed down first. Once we've got all the, the sort of background stuff in place, I guess the question is how do we actually start building up a brand if, if we don't know how to produce content, we're not very good at it, and we're, we're completely new? I think... The first thing would be to remember that it doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of personal branding is actually communicating your personality and your own values. And that doesn't have to be clean and corporate and absolutely 100% error free. You know, these sort of quirks and ways that you speak that might not be um, correct graph grammatically, they're actually quite common ways that people speak and it's it's a great way to actually resonate with people if you're very human and personal about it so the simplest way to start is actually just to take a topic you know if you could write a blog post about it perfect that's a great topic write a blog post you might find it difficult it might not be perfect there might be errors fine you've actually got some content it's better to have that starting point than have nothing at all you know done is better than perfect right at the start and then what you can do is simply incrementally improve on that each time. So you don't have to go from zero to perfect straight away. All you've got to do is just improve 1% each time. And through the compound effects, it's probably quite a, a well-known thing. You're actually going to improve a lot over time. So, yeah, I think the overall message is don't stress out about being perfect straight away. Just get something on paper or on video and then incrementally improve as you develop. Well, that, that's that, uh, you know, almost a cliche now, but that's authenticity, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And people are sort of tired of, I mentioned the corporate kind of style, this corporate robotic style. And often that's actually what LinkedIn is known for, is simply being a place to, to get corporate jobs. Um, but that's not actually the case anymore. We're moving away from that and we're moving to a, a much more human style of business. People want to do business with other people rather than corporate robots, right? So, so that is your process. You you're started working with me and we're, you're working, you're saying, Alex, all right, we got to get some content going here. Don't be afraid. Just get something on paper. Let's get going with that. And then is the next step, let's say it is, let's applying it to LinkedIn. Is that where you work with me to 
develop uh, ways to use that content on specifically tailored to LinkedIn? Yeah, so much of the work I do is LinkedIn. If we take that example, one of the key things we also want to do once we're posting the content is optimize your profile. Yeah. Because we ultimately with our content, we want people to to click through to our profile, which is sort of our home ground or almost a sales page, but we don't want to we don't want to be too forceful with the sale, right? It's it's our home ground and it's all about us, right? No one else's content is there. There's no other competitors taking away this viewer's attention. The page is, is you, okay? So we want to optimize that to actually communicate a very clear message about what we do. So let's, say, let's take you as an example. If it was um, consulting around PR, we'd want to make it very clear who we're targeting with that PR, so the kind of clients you want to work with, what you actually help them do, and the result of it. It's also good to include things like um, the pain points that you solve, you know, really um, pushing those home, things like social proofing. If you've got testimonials or results, there are also great things to include on there. But something that essentially says to your visitors, I am an expert at this and I can get you this result. You know, Sam, I, I was just calling up my page here and I'm, I'm, I've not even asked him to look at it ahead of time, so I'll deserve what I get. If, but my, <laughs> my, my headline, I'll just read it to you really quickly if that's all right. Uh, Alex Greenwood, public relations, crisis communication consultant, writer, podcaster, social media strategist, and business consultant. It occurs to me that while that probably helps me a little bit to be found through search, maybe, am I, is it too much of a laundry list to, to delist yeah, all those so, things? So it's, it's a really interesting debate and what I've seen is that if you're an if you're already established as, as a pretty well-known person brand you're one of the big names it's okay to, to simply have the, the job title kind of approach like you've got if you're if you're in the earlier stages or you're just building up your personal brand what you probably want to do early on in your tagline and your tagline is really important because it's along with your profile picture if someone comes across you in the feed it's the only thing they're seeing so it's really the key thing that's going to make people click through to your profile so what you want to do is address your target audience and address the result you help them achieve early on in your tagline. Yeah. So for you, it could be something like um, helping whatever sort of companies you use grow their business through PR. And if you address that early on, you're almost qualifying people to visit your profile. If they fit that model, they're gonna come through to your profile. And this is sort of ties back to what I was saying about making your personal brand practical. We don't just want to target anyone and everyone and have loads and loads of conversations with people that aren't actually going to become clients or grow our business. We want to use it to find the right people. And when you use that approach, you actually end up getting the right people on your profile. You might get slightly fewer, but it's going to be much more practical. We're going quality versus quantity then here. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's the way I think we should do it. Well, then I think I will have to uh, revisit that later <laughs> after we're done speaking. But I, I have a decent photo. I've had better photos, but they're all prof they've always been professional. One thing, I've done a little training of people on a very basic level, folks who've really just getting into LinkedIn. And, and God bless them, I've had some, some particularly gentlemen They'll, they'll post a picture of themselves like at a wedding in a tuxedo. And I, <laughs> I said, unless you're going to be a maitre d' or a magician, I think you don't want to appear in a tuxedo on your LinkedIn page because it's it sets up a weird uh, expectation it might distract from who you really are is, is that is that bad advice or good advice I hope it's good <laughs> yeah absolutely I think the key word there is expectation and you, you're spot on if if you're a magician then it's it's fine because it communicates the kind of thing you're into if you're let's say let's take a fitness professional hmm. if you're if you're a weight loss coach or, or a fitness professional you probably want something to do with you in gym clothes or you in a gym. It doesn't have to be you in a suit, right? Right. You want something that is almost a visual representation of what you're offering. Yeah. Yeah. And the other comment, too, is you often see people who throw up a, a candid, and there's always like the ghostly hand on the shoulder because it's been, you know, cropped <laughs> inappropriately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But do go on. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about LinkedIn. Let So the first thing you're, you're talking about then once we're in there, you're working with us, we're optimizing the profile, right? And you're looking at the easy stuff we've already covered. The photo's got to be decent. The uh, I mean, I don't know if you advocate going out and actually getting a professional headshot or not, but uh, at least it's got to be a clear photo. Is there any just quick tip on photos you'd like to provide? Yeah, as long as you've got sort of head and shoulders clearly in it, if you can keep your eyes two-thirds of the way up the frame, 
-hmm. that's perfect you can if you can't afford to go out and get a professional photo just get someone to to take it at home with a good decent quality camera um but yeah if you if you can get something high quality done professionally it it just says to your your visitors i am established i am a professional let me ask you a little bit about content then on LinkedIn. I do a fair amount of article writing, not as much as I probably should, but I know for a fact I do share a lot of posts that have or links to news and maybe add a comment to that, or I put links to my podcast tagging my guests. What what to you is more important, or are they equally important, or is, is uh, just posting relevant stuff that you think people might find interesting in their feed, or posting actual articles you've written and content that's directly from you? Yeah. Okay. So I guess the distinction you're making is between creation and curation. Yeah. So whether you're sharing your own thing or someone else's. Generally, I'd put the focus on creation. So things that you have produced yourself and thoughts that you have rather than curation. The reason for that is because it shows your authority rather than someone else's. You know, anyone can go out and read an article and, and share it. Not everyone will read an article think about what's gone on in the article, debate whether they actually agree with what's being said and give their own take on it. So if you are going to curate, then definitely add your own thoughts on top of something. Hmm. Even better as you go one further and actually create your own, share your own unique knowledge. I'm not saying curation is necessarily bad. If there's something that's going to be valuable, by all means share it. But do try and add your own two cents on top of it. You know, I had a very successful post uh, last week. I had an experience where, as a PR consultant, I had a uh, prospective client contact me. And long story short, he, he didn't seem to understand that um, since I, I'm uh, doing media relations, I cannot guarantee I will place your article on the front page of the paper or get you on television. What I can provide is the best strategy and the best possible shot at that through my experience and my contacts. But he was like, well, then why should I pay you unless you do it? <laughs> and I, my comment was, well... Uh, if you have an accountant and you get audited by the IRS, it's not necessarily the accountant's fault. You still have to pay the accountant. If you have an attorney and you hire them to get you out of jail and they can't, you still have to pay the attorney. So I, I kind of laid that out in a just a general post, right? And I added a survey saying, basically, am I crazy here or should we be paid uh, only by performance or not? And it went crazy, though, Sam. I had a lot of people like answering the survey but I had a well over like 20 comments below and I never get that kind of interaction. Is that back to authenticity? Was that me just being a, a regular person, a business person and a frustrated PR consultant at that day in that moment that is that, is that what you think kind of would strike a nerve? Yeah, I think what it is is being relatable and often that does come from authenticity, but relatable content is some of the most powerful stuff out there in terms of actually building your personal brand getting people to to know you and like you and, and actually trust you. I think if you look at most the most successful content over LinkedIn, if you I don't know if this has actually been done, but if you if you took the post with the most engagement on LinkedIn and sort of analyzed them, you'd find that over ninety percent of them were relatable to the people they were targeting. Obviously the post that, that you put out, people have probably experienced a similar thing to you in the past. Hmm. Right. And that has what has made it relatable and has obviously inspired people to actually comment themselves and give their own thoughts, which, as you said, it shows you are just like them. It builds up that trust with them. And obviously, if they are if they're looking for someone for their PR services, they already trust you. You're an advantage compared to everyone else. You, you know, I, I almost took it down as soon as I put it up, Sam. I didn't have the courage of my convictions because I thought maybe they would think I was whinging about it and that maybe I wasn't. Uh, you know what I mean? And I didn't name names or anything, I, but I just thought this was a moment I wanted to, I think I wanted to vent, which I know you're not necessarily supposed to do on social media, especially LinkedIn, but I also wanted to educate because it's a big problem. And the PR folks who listen to this show know this. It's a very big problem. Our industry, public relations for professional communicators, we do a fairly lousy job of educating the public about what we can and cannot do for them. I appreciate you saying that. And so the relatability factor, I would not thought about it in quite that way. I'm looking at your website. You're talking about redefining personal branding in general. I said, oh my gosh, yes. Or has it been kind of a slog to get people to understand where you're coming from? So about the, the sort of redefining part, what it essentially, just for a, a bit of understanding, is 
I don't think we should be solely focused on the things like the content strategies and the profile stuff that we've actually spoken about now. We shouldn't solely be focused on that, but we should also be focused on developing the right character, the right identity for ourselves as well, sort of the inner work. Because if you look at all the successful personal brands, what you'll notice is that typically they're confident, they're more hardworking than most, they're more disciplined, more consistent. So if we don't develop up that character for ourselves, there's no way we can actually act on this strategy that we're building over a long enough period of time for it to work. Hmm. So that's the kind of the philosophy around redefining it. And I think what has been successful about it is that it splits people, which is kind of what you want. And you you can't be afraid to actually put people some people off with your personal brand. You know, if if you've got something that's for everyone, you've actually got something that's for no one. It's quite a classic saying. Um, and I don't want to credit myself for coming up with it, <laughs> not by any means. Um, but yeah, some people completely jump on board and they get it straight away. And those are the people I want to work with. Others, they're maybe not so fussed about building up the character and it's not really for them, but that's fine because chances are if we'd worked together, we would have found that out after they'd invested hundreds of thousands of pounds and we both invest time and it ends up being a waste right. so it's sort of again it's another qualifying stage that makes sure i'm working with people that i actually want to work with right you say that personal branding is a game of patience and consistency are you finding people uh, even people you do want to work with are you finding some of them are impatient for it to to take off and is that a constant uh, as as their whatever you want to call you as their consultant as their coach is that something you constantly have to kind of ride herd on and say hey remember it's it's a it's a marathon it's not a sprint do you have to do that yeah absolutely some people do understand that it's going to take time and i think generally entrepreneurs as a population are starting to understand that a little bit more it's kind of been we've had these get rich quick schemes drilled into us through all sorts of ads but i think slowly we're moving away from that so there are people that do understand that it takes time and that the number of people that understand that obviously increases with the amount of education we're doing on platforms like linkedin around it but yeah of course you do get some people that want quite a quick fix and want results straight away but i think yeah i'd remind them that that combination of um patience and urgency was it or persistence is is the key way to go yeah. Okay. Let's say uh, you're, you're, you're talking to, well, you are talking to our audience. If, if you were to say to them, uh, listeners, here, here are the type of folks or the type of uh, industries, type of vectors that uh, would work best with our program is to go ahead. Like you've got your free commercial here. Just say, <laughs> these are the people we're looking for to help. And, and the reason we're looking for them is because we had best results with these types of folks. If you, if you care to. Sure. So generally mission driven entrepreneurs and coaches, I'm not really interested in working with anyone that's just in their business for money and, and doesn't have a, a valuable mission outside of that. Generally, they're, they're between 5 and 15K per month, and they have a, a little bit of understanding around social media and LinkedIn, but not an awful lot. And can you, I assume you can work with anyone anywhere virtually, correct? Yeah, work online. I've, I'm actually in the process of building out uh, an agency kind of model where we actually meet these, this would be for sort of CEOs and entrepreneurs of slightly larger companies where we're actually meeting them and creating the content with them, you know, shooting it on site, which was obviously limited to the UK as that's where we're based. But in terms of coaching and consulting, it's worldwide. I like that. Uh, do you do any, any webinars, things like that, just to kind of just kind of help people with the basics or is that something you've kind of moved away from? Sure. So in my LinkedIn content, I cover pretty much everything I know anyway. So you can get quite a lot of value from that. I also do have a Facebook group where I go live every Friday for a Q&A and answer any question. Oh, kind of an AMA, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Do you repurpose that content? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Winsbury, how do people get a hold of you if they are intrigued as they should be just to learn more about you? Where is that website? And I'll, of course, put it all in the show notes, but uh, can you just tell so, everybody? Yeah, the website is personalbrandingguy.com. And you can catch me on LinkedIn. I'm probably most active on LinkedIn. So if you want to connect on there, I'm, I'm happy to just shoot me a message. That sounds good. Well, Sam Winsbury, that personal branding guy, that's for sure. And I, I'm intrigued. And I wish I had more time because I have a million more questions. You're probably thinking, 
Yes, you should. You should have a lot more questions, Alex. I've seen your LinkedIn <laughs> page. But uh, no, but I, I really do appreciate it. And just open, open, uh, open invitation anytime you'd like to appear here in the virtual lounge. We'd love to have you back. Alex, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on. You bet. Oh, you know what that means? Looks like it's last call here at your virtual lounge for PR news views and interviews. Don't forget, you can ask me a question anytime. You can do it through our Twitter account, which is at ours PR. Or even better, you can send me a message vocally. I would love to hear your voice and I'll answer it on the show. There's a link in the show notes. All you have to do is sign up through Anchor FM. It's free. doesn't take long and you record your message, I get the message, I will play your audio, just give me your first name in the city you live in, and then I will answer the question to the best of my ability right here on the show. Don't forget to, if you're enjoying this podcast, you can support it and help increase the frequency and value of the show. Just consider being a sponsor for your brand or your agency or just yourself because you're like, I like this show. Or just drop a few coins in the virtual tip jar. Either way, there's links in the show notes. Please check that out. All of that, of course, being in the show notes where you're listening right now or at prafterhours.com. I see that they're turning up the lights. Last call is over, and I've got to clean up this virtual lounge. And Until next time, I'm Alex Greenwood, and you've been listening to PR After Hours on Anchor FM.